Brother Edwin, paano po ba nagsimula yung iglesia? Well, uh, we believe that the Iglesia de Cristo is the re-establishment. It's the fulfillment of a prophecy written in the Bible concerning the re-establishment of the genuine church founded by the Lord Jesus Christ. When Brother Felix Y. Manalo began preaching about the Iglesia de Cristo, or in English, the Church of Christ, he was fulfilling a biblical prophecy that uh, in the Far East, uh, the gathering uh, of God's uh, children would begin, would emerge, and it would spread throughout the world. And part of the prophecy is that uh, Brother Felix Manalo, as well as the members of the Church of Christ, would uphold fidelity to what the Bible teaches. So, uh, this is what you see now. Physically speaking, uh, how did it begin? Uh, ang kapatid na Felix Manalo, nagpunta siya sa mga dati niyang kasamahan sa isang uh, relihiyon, protestante, na grupo, sa Punta Santa Ana. At pagkatapos ipinangaral niya sa kanila yung nasa Biblia. At uh, nang tanggapin nila ito, noong July 27, 1914, ipinarehistro ito sa pamahalaan ng Pilipinas. Mula doon sa unang lokal, tinatawag namin siyang local congregation or lokal, mula doon sa unang lokal ng Iglesia ni Cristo sa Punta Santa Ana, uh, dinala niya ito sa iba't iba pang lugar. Uh, ngayon, uh, 102 different nationalities belong to the Iglesia ni Cristo. Dati po ilan yung unang lokal? Isa lang. I mean, ilan sila? Ilan, ilan yung tao? Uh, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, isang dosena yata. Ganun lang sila karami. Parang mga disipulo. Yes. Uh, you, you could say that. Hindi parang talaga. Because by disciple, you uh, mean a follower. And uh, they were convinced to follow what the Bible teaches. Paano po luba kayo ng isang dosena naging ilang milyon? Na? Itinataguyod ng Iglesia ni Cristo yung isa pang aral sa Biblia. Tinuro ng Panginoon Heso Cristo yun. Sabi niya, shine as lights in the world. We should serve as salt of the earth. By means of our good works, we bring glory to the Father. So since naninindigan ng Iglesia ni Cristo sa ganun, mula sa namamahala, down to the rank and file, if I may use that word, lahat ng miyembro, kailangan nating uh, magbagong buhay. Kailangan nating ipakita na tayo ay umiiwas sa kasalanan. At the same time, part of serving as light in the world is inviting people to listen to and accept uh, the genuine words of the Lord God written in the Bible. So, tinutupad yun ang mga kaanib sa Iglesia ni Cristo mula pa nun hanggang ngayon. Pero di ba po, Brother Ed, marami rin naman po mga ibang grupo na ganyan din ang sinasabi. Mm. Paano nag-stand out ang ano, Iglesia? Simple lang naman eh. Uh, if, if ever you get the chance to uh, attend, for example, uh, a Bible study on doctrines uh, with facing a minister, usually ang marinig mo, uh, not exactly this way, pero yung, yung general idea is, he'll ask you, do you believe in the Bible? If you, gusto mo tigil natin muna? Makainitin na kayo, brother. Okay lang. Hintayin natin sila makalapas. Dahil sa matipit up yata yan, ano? Okay. So, generally, what you'll hear from a minister of the church is this. Do you believe in the Bible? If the answer to that question is yes, and in fact, do you own a Bible? Okay, you bring your Bible. Let's open the Bible. What did your church, what did your religion teach you? Then let's compare it to what the Bible teaches. If it's the same, exactly the same, don't abandon the church you belong to. Stay there. Because it's already upholding uh, what the gospel preaches, or rather, what the gospel contains. But if you discover even just one contradiction, the question now is, why would you choose to remain in a church that claims to follow the Lord God and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, but contradicts one or more teachings recorded in the Bible. And then the Iglesia ni Cristo minister will probably say to you, okay, so after having examined uh, your faith, listen to what the Iglesia ni Cristo teaches, and then let's see if it's in the Bible. Ganun lang kasimple. Ano po yung isa o dalawang pinakamahalagang core values or Yung itinuro ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, naka, I, I will have to cite biblical passages in John chapter 17, 1 and 3, as well as in John chapter 20, verse 17. Itinuro ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, ang Ama niya, the Father, is the only true Lord God. Itinuro rin ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa John 4, 24, na the Lord God is a spirit. In Luke 24, Pardon me for preaching. Luke 24, 36 to 39. A spirit has no flesh and bones. 
puro ang Panginoong Heso Kristo nagturo nun. Naninindigan ang iligasya ni Kristo nun. That's, that's just one example. Uh, ano ba sige. Ano ba ang tao si Brother Felix? I mean, yung, ano yung naririnig nyo tungkol sa kanya na... Mm. Hindi ko na siya inabot. Siyempre, hindi nyo na inabot. Hindi ko na siya inabot. Na inabot. Nakakwentuhan ko yung mga napakinggan siya. Oo. Oh, ano yung ba? mga narinig siya mangaral. Ganun lang. Ang isa sa malimit daw niyang binabanggit noon ay uh, Biblia ang pakinggan natin. Pero yung ano po, personal characteristics siya, demeanor niya, charismatic ba siya, bakit marami siyang na inggan niyo? Uh, matapang sa paninindigan sa kalooban ng Diyos. Kasi kung hindi siya matapang, isipin mo yung pasimula. Nag-iisa siyang ministro ng Iglesia ni Kristo. Nagsimula siyang mangaral. May mga nakatatag ng ibang reliyon sa Pilipinas nung nagsisimula siyang mangaral. At matagal na silang nakatatag sa Pilipinas. Suportado sila ng galing sa ibang bansa. Mayayaman sila. Siya nag-iisa. Ang dala niya, Biblia lang. Kung hindi siya matapang, hindi niya itataguyod yun. Ano po yung mga sinabi ng mga ibang reliyon noon tungkol sa kanil? Uh, hindi matanggap ng iba. Pero meron din namang mga nakipag-diskusyon sa kanya, gamitin ko yung term yun, o nakipag-debate sa kanya, na nakumbinse, na tinanggap yung aral ng Biblia na itinuturo ni Brother Felix Manalo. Sapagat napatunayan nila, nasa Biblia nga talaga. Tingin nyo ano yung pinakamasamang insulto na binigay sa kanya ng mga? Wow, eh, totoo, kahit isa lang, eh, masama na, eh, no? I, I really would not know. I, I was not yet alive then. Pero, he was born and raised a Catholic, and then he left the Catholic Church. He had an uncle who was a priest in the Catholic Church. He left, he joined several Protestant churches one after the other. He became a preacher in those Protestant denominations. But he kept coming across contradictions. Kasi ang, ang, ang nasa isip niya, kung ganito lang kasimple, nasa Biblia ba talaga ang salita ng Diyos? Kung nasa Biblia ang salita ng Diyos at yan ang kailangan natin, eh dito pa rin natin kahit masagasaan yung personal nating gusto. May charisma siya. Well, teaching. well if, if you define charisma as being what? Uh, being spirit-filled? Oh yes, he had that. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Fast forward naman po kayo, ano po tingin niyo yung pinakamalaking misconception tungkol sa iglesia? Uh, marami, ano? pinakamalaki. Um, Para maklaro, maklaro lang natin. Siguro, yung iniisip ng ibang tao na meron kaming ibang agenda. Labas ng relihiyon. Ang Iglesia ni Kristo, napakadaling unawain. Uh, gusto namin na maglingkod sa Diyos at sumampalataya sa Kanya, sumamba sa Kanya, na nakabatay yun sa aral ni Kristo at ng mga alagad niya. Yun lang ang gusto ng Iglesia ni Kristo. Well, kung kumikilos ang Iglesia ni Kristo, baka iniisip nila na meron pa kaming ibang layunin liban doon sa ipalaganap ang Ibanghelyo. Well, you could, uh, if others say that, then perhaps uh, uh, they should be the ones, since they made the assertion, they should be the ones uh, offering proof. Tingin nyo bakit yun? Bakit nila sinasabi? Yun ang hindi ko kayang sagutin dahil isip ng iba tao yun eh. Hindi ko kayang hulaan kung ano ang nasa puso't isip ng iba. Ano mo lang po, kasi syempre may mga iba nag-criticize doon sa black booty. Syempre, marami na kayo narinig po. Ano, ano nyo? Ano yung response sa mga ganun? I'm sorry? Uh, yung mga black booty uh, daw. Okay. Uh, Again, going back to what the Bible teaches. Nakokontrol daw yung utak ng tao. I mean, galing yan sa syempre, maraming mga ibang para lang hmm. masagot po ninyo. Ang isa sa aral ng Biblia, unity. Uh, unity in serving the Lord God. Unity in faith. Unity in rendering judgment. That's in the Bible. So when members of the Iglesia de Cristo, for example, here in the Philippines, were asked to vote, we are being asked to render a judgment. So we have to put God, obedience to God first, before obedience to any man-made law. If God requires unity, if God requires that the body of Christ, the church of Christ, be one, we will uphold it no matter how others may react to it. And then, sir, how do we you know, um, reconcile that with you? Pardon? With free will. How do we reconcile obedience with free will? Well, before a member, or rather, before anyone can be baptized into the church, even if you are born of members, you still have to go through the Bible study and doctrines. So, you grew up, your parents are members of the church. At a certain age, when you can render a judgment or a decision concerning faith, 
you undergo the same set of biblical instruction as someone who grew up outside the church. And then you're given enough time. You know how long it takes? We require a minimum of six months before anyone can accept baptism inside the Church of Christ. So that you can exercise your free will. Examine what you heard. Examine it in light of what the Bible teaches. Now, if at the end of that time, you decide, hindi ako nakumbinse, okay, bigyan pa rin tayo. If at the end of that time, nakumbinse ka, then you'll have to follow. So the free will comes in dun sa, ano, sa pag... pag nagsisimula pa lang. Yes, simula. nagsisimula pa lang. So, at tuloy-tuloy yan. You are free to choose iglesia. Yes, yes. And uh, if you choose it, you have to follow. Yes, Tama because you made a, a, a conscious decision. And it was uh, a decision, we hope, that was well thought out because you first heard the doctrines of the Bible that the Iglesia Nikisa holds. We vote. That's it. Yun lang. Siguro, isa yung sa mga misconceptions to po sa amin na after voting, meron pa kaming ginagawa. No? We vote, tapos. Yeah, oo. Kasi, di ba, may nagkasabi, may lobbying daw for certain decisions. Those who assert that, they should be the ones providing proof for their assertion. Di ba? Kasi ka nagsabi eh. Nagpaparatang sila sa amin ng gano'n. Sinatanungin natin, ano proof niyo? Kasi kami alam namin ang ginagawa namin. Last, ano na po, last chunk of questions. Gano'n matagal na po ba kayo, Brother Edwin sa Iglesia? Oh, I'm a third generation member of the Iglesia de Cristo. Since birth kayo? I, I, yes, uh, I was offered inside the church and when I was uh, 12 years old, yes, when I was 12 years old, I went through the Bible study and doctrines and I received baptism. Uh, pero Iglesia yung family niyo? Yes. Tingin niyo, ano, um, paano magbabago yung buhay nyo kung hindi kayo Iglesia, taga Iglesia de Cristo? I would not be receiving the instruction from the Bible twice a week. Because that's one of the doctrines we uphold. You need to attend the congregational worship services. So we receive God's words twice a week whenever we attend uh, worship services. And then there are visitations inside the church where we continue to receive instructions from the Bible. Mawawala sa buhay ko yun. And I need that. I need that. Ang, ang Diyos pinagpapala niya yung masunurin sa kanya. Hindi ko sinasabing ako'y ganap ng masunurin. Ako'y tao rin, nagkakabali rin. Tayo lahat ng masunurin. Yes. Gano'n po kahalaga yung obedience sa loob ng iglesia? Well, napakahalaga. That is, uh, if you're not willing to obey, if you're not willing to submit to the will of the Lord God, eh, yun nga ang uh, point, yun nga ang posisyon ng iglesia ni Cristo. Eh, na kahit masakta ng kalooban mo, kung ito yung tinuturo ng Biblia, ito yung requirement ni Cristo, even if it goes against your personal wishes. But if, if prior to that, you made a choice, I want to be obedient to God and to Christ, obey. It's as simple as that. Make a conscious choice every single day. May tunay na Diyos. Ang tunay na Diyos, napakabuti niya. Napakabait. Punong-puno ng pag-ibig. Ito na yung binubuhay niya tayo hanggang ngayon. Sa kabila nung may mga pagkukulang, gaya nga na sinabi mo rin kanina, hindi tayo perfect. Sa kabila nung ang Panginoong Diyos, hindi nagkukulang. Diba? Patuloy siya nagbibigay ng kailangan ng tao. Ng tao. May tunay na Diyos? Doesn't He deserve our praise? Doesn't He deserve our worship, our thanksgiving, our obedience? So yun ang pinakamahalagang mensahe ng Iglesia ng Cristo. May tunay na Diyos. May problema ka. Naghihirap ka. Nagkasakit ka. May problema sa pamilya mo. Ano man ang problema, ang tunay na Diyos, makapangyarihan sa lahat. Walang imposible sa kanya eh. And in relation to that, Brother Edwin, kanina pala sinabi ni Pinoy, parang natutuwa daw siya sa Iglesia dahil hindi raw natatapos ang pananampalataya sa loob ng pakilya. Anong ibig sabihin ba nun? I mean, from an insider. Kasi, tinuturo ng Biblia na uh, kinakailang ibuhay natin ang aral. Sa panahon na nasa uh, pagtitipong kongregasyonal, tinuturo ka ng salita ng Diyos sa Biblia. So, paglabas mo ng gusaling sambahan, ibuhay mo yun. Hindi natatapos sa loob ng gusaling sambahan ng pagiging iglesia ni Kristo ng isang kaanit. Paglabas, ibuhay mo yung aral. Sa ibang reliyon? Oh, I, I suppose, uh, yun ang layunin ng lahat ng reliyon. I, I, I personally do not know of any religion that would say, oh, sa loob lang ha, pag sa labas, gawin mo ka ano gusto mo. Pero sa inyo, mag-effective yata. Ano? Kasi nga, sabi ko sa'yo kanina, nakumbinsi kami 
walang itinuro sa amin hindi ibinatay sa Biblia. We checked it for ourselves. We examined it for ourselves. We investigated it for ourselves. And uh, we were able to prove it for ourselves. So having uh, done that, walang dahilan para sirain mo. Saka core value na iglesia yung obedience. Yes. Totoo yun. 